Should I buy two private properties in the long run or buy one private only and invest the rest? Or should I actually use both cash and CPF and buy entirely into dividends and wait for a better period for re-entering the Singapore property market? Or should I buy resale and start collecting rent right now? And last but not least, what about buying a new launch of TOP in 2027-2028 and collect interest in the meanwhile? These are some questions that maybe you also had. So today, let's have a discussion on some of these topics. Hi guys, welcome back. Before we get any further, let me lay some ground rules first for common understanding. How about that? The first is, whatever I mentioned over here, take it with a grain of salt. The second is, I love investments. This channel I've mentioned a lot of times of how I invest. And I had more success with investing into the equity markets than in property markets. Our successes shape our preferences. That applies to everybody. The third is I'm not a property consultant and I'm only just a keen observer of our own property residential market. The fourth is I've actually sold my HDB flat, which I've been renting out previously because I have the assumption that property markets are of the high cycle now. So naturally, that impacts some of the things I'll be mentioning in today's discussion. And last but not least, I don't know your full situation. I can only make calculated guesses. So see this as honest pushback, friendly feedback, whatever you call it. And with that established, let's roll on to today's case. Now the couple that rolled into me is actually in their mid 50s. And when you are at an older age, you also know that the amount of loan you can take is much lesser. According to our loan to valuation guidelines, if you want to have the maximum loan to valuation of 75%, you can only loan until the age of 65. Which means also, if you are age of 35 right now, you can loan 30 years all the way to 65 and get 75% loan. For someone older, you realize the total number of years are shorter, which means the per month mortgage is higher, which impacts the total debt servicing ratio TDSR. Currently, the rules are that a borrower's TDSR should not exceed 55%. The second part of today's case is this couple who have wrote in, have actually sold away their home and shifted in with parents with no next house confirmed yet. Quote, we sold our private property one month ago. Original plan was to rent out, but after much consideration, we've decided to sell. And just in case in future, we plan to buy two private properties instead of one. Now, my inclination is whatever age you are at right now, I would discourage selling away home and staying somewhere else, whether it's parents' house or rented, in hopes that in future you buy back a replacement home. The reason is because no one knows for sure where the property markets will be in future, correct? We are taking a very big risk with such an action. Now, in the previous episode, I've actually quoted from this financial journalist whose friend is a lawyer and sold his house in the COVID crash of 2020. Long story short, he regrets that decision because property prices just kept climbing since 2020, correct? Selling away home is very different from selling away an investment property. One takes care of our day-to-day -day needs. The other is purely business, turning an investment into cash. So again, reiterating, do not sell your home unnecessarily regardless of what you think the property cycle is. When you own a property as a home, you're actually market neutral. Market goes up, you sell and buy, it's at a high cycle. Market goes down, you sell and buy, it's also at a low cycle. You're technically not benefiting too much unless you upgrade or downgrade. And just now remember hearing, selling just in case you want to buy two private properties instead of one. Now to be comfortable with achieving that, it really depends on your current assets and your current income. And I guess there are clues over here when I ask about why did the couple not do decoupling? Back then, at the point of sale, the idea of decoupling didn't work. No, 50-50 is too much for one party to top up the CPF OA of the other. We had already used up a lot of money to buy our parents' four-room HDB flat. This is important because this kind of suggests there's not enough cash left on hand. And to quote further, when the previous home was sold, 780000 of CPF came back. 290,000 in terms of cash came back. How much gain was there? 501,000. And how much net gain after lessing CPF compounded interest is $370,000. Now, 
So if you were to interpret this correctly, the total amount of assets coming back is 1.07 million. But that may not be the selling price of the property, correct? Usually there's still remaining loan. And if you were to put in an easy assumption, let's say there's 400,000 remaining loan. That means that this prior property could be sold at 1.47 million. Clearing away the loan, then this is the remaining asset given back. And there's about a 500,000 gain, which means that maybe the property was bought at $970,000 quite a few years back. And the net gain of $370,000 after lessing CPFOA compounded interest opportunity. Are you meaning the accrued interest, which is actually opportunity cost for using your CPFOA? If that's the case, maybe this $130,000 is CPFOA accrued interest. And this gives me a hint. Maybe this property was not owned for too many years, maybe five, seven years, thereabouts. I don't have exact data, but if I were to take a guess, that would be my pick. It's also quite possible because if we were to see the previous bear cycle, 2015-2016, property prices were very suppressed back then. That was a bear cycle. So anyone buying back at a period of time could have made a significant gain. Now decoupling this topic, if you are owning a private property jointly owned, how it actually works is for a couple, one half is selling to the other and this must be done at fair value. And the person buying will typically take on the new loan himself or herself and then pay the selling half CPFOA and cash. Of course, the cash is left pocket to right pocket between married couples. And for CPFOA, yes, indeed, you have to refund back the selling half's CPFOA. Now, I've also seen private clients take on term equity loan to achieve this. And the other point is, for this case itself, both are in their 50s which means that the CPFOA is actually quite readily accessible, especially if full retirement sum is already met. Do note, once you have full retirement sum, you can actually assess your CPF SA and OA. Now, but to this point, my gut feeling is there is simply not enough cash and assets on hand to comfortably afford two private properties, whether it's decoupling or selling to buy two or not. And if there's no big sums coming in like inheritance and stuff, Personally, I guess it will be stretched because if you use the 335 formula, 30% of down payment, mortgage should not be more than 30%, and the property that you buy should be less than five times of your income. My guess is for this situation, one of these will be breached. Now, so I'm suggesting two property ideas should not be pursued too easily, especially in the 50s, because again, many have gotten into asset rich cash poor situation. Rent income from properties are not guaranteed. Now, of course, it's a good cycle. Back in 2017, 2018, when I was renting out, it's not so easy to rent. Secondly, many have expensive homes, but homes you can't consume for income in retirement. This is important note, and if you agree, smash the like button for me because it's taking our team hours to prepare this presentation for you. And if you're looking for retirement planning on a one-to-one -one basis, on a fee, look for my links below. Now let's address back the initial question we had at the start of this discussion, correct? Should I use cash and CPF to invest in the blue chips and wait for a better period to re-enter? Option 2, should I start buying resale and start collecting rent? Option 3, should I buy a new launch that will TOP in 2027-2028 and in the meanwhile collect interest? How to answer this question? <laughs> it really depends on the future rate of return for Singapore blue chips and Singapore residential property market. If property markets go up, option 2 and 3 would look good. But if it goes down, option 2 and 3 would be terrible. If Singapore blue chips go up, option 1 looks good. But if it goes down or doesn't do as well as property markets, then option 1 doesn't look too good. So instead, I'll try to answer this question with two suggestions. The first is, it really depends on your own investment experience. I sold in my HDB flat because I believe I can get better returns from equity markets as of this cycle. So I actually asked this question to them. And it seems from the surface, there is some level of investment experience and there's some level of success. So maybe option one is worth considering. Then the second question that I'd like to ask is, what is your expectation of a retirement home? This has very little to do with Fed rates and housing supply because I've also saw, because quote, our own assessment of the current market is apparently interest rates high as compared to last year. Fed reserve might reduce rates 
in second half of 2024? We don't know that for sure. That is speculative and that is already common expectation in the market. And at the same time, we are seeing housing supply high in 2023 and more supply coming in 2024. Now to this point, property markets go in very, very slow cycles. It's not like equity markets. Property markets, when they go up, it's a multi-year bull market. When they come down, like in 2013, 2016, it's a multi-year bear market. So someone selling today and buying in second half 2024, that isn't going to be that much of a price difference. It's still roughly the same market cycle. So that leads me to answering your question this way. If this is a retirement home, don't stay out of the property market cycle too long. You don't want that stress and ultimately you have to buy because it's a need and no longer just an investment asset. So what I propose is instead, consider how much money you need of this 1.07 million jointly owned for your own retirement. If you need 200,000, 300,000 of it, then keep them in liquid investments. Since you have some experience on the equity markets, I do think forget about owning two private properties at this stage in life and at this rough assessment of asset base. That is my own interpretation of what is being prudent. Then for the remaining capital of this 1.07 million, think through what is an ideal retirement home. So pertaining to this point, let's look back again at the questions. Question 3, should we buy a new launch that will TOP in 2027, 2028? I think personally that doesn't sound like home. It smells very speculative to me on the basis that you know previously a lot of people made money in new launch projects. That is an assumption of price appreciation already. And there's certain problems with this choice. If you need to move in as a home, it's not going to be there for 4 years at least, correct? And not just that, you can't do viewings on it. You don't even know if you like staying in that area or not. So I'll definitely rock option 3. And instead, what I'm leaning towards is quite obviously option 2. If a home is needed, and in this case, quite possibly a retirement home, buy it now already with the right budget. If property markets go up or property markets go down, you are stress-free. It's much better in this approach. And I'd like to suggest again that there's no shame downgrading. My own parents-in-law stay in private property and they are now happily staying in a 5-room HDB flat. Take note again, there's a 15-month cooling period when you're selling a private property to buy a HDB flat. You can only go for a 4-room and below. You can easily afford it within the budget and you can buy something that is new with a lot of lease left. And you can even buy an area that you like. Again, the key focus is retirement home and keep enough assets liquid for retirement consumption. That is my quick sharing. And as always, leave your thoughts and comments in the sections below. And if you have enjoyed this discussion, check out this one which I previously had. And I'll see you there too. Take care as always. Goodbye.